Well, I'm the um, treasurer of the Sunnyside Friends, and also I'm one of the people that have a key to the bookshop. So that means uh, when no one else is here, then I'm it to open the bookshop and close it up. There could be, there's about 10 to 12 volunteers. Some of them only work maybe one or two days a month, and there's other of us who work every day that we're open. Uh, the money here is used for projects that the libraries might need to do that um, the county uh, is not able to pay for. For example, uh, the Sunnyside Friends bought $5,000 worth of um, meeting tables to put into the, me uh, into the meeting room. Also, we paid uh, as a um, new project for the mobile printing. Our library and one other library are trying it out to see how the customers like it. Well, we have so many books at reasonable prices and all the books are donated. And so if people just know where we are and come, they can find some wonderful books because people donate wonderful books and um, you just never know what you're gonna find when you come in. It gets me out of the house for one thing, and it's fun. Um, I love working with books, and uh, my twin sister works here also, and then there are other people that are fun to be around, and we have regular customers that come in, and so they're not, it's nice to see them too. We're here to talk about the shade sale structure. And that project has been about three years in the planning and we're so happy that it's finally completed. The shade sails were originally part of the site plan for the building, but because of, of budget constraints, they weren't able to be built. So about three years ago when we were thinking about the 10th anniversary of the building, we thought it would be a perfect time to complete the, the uh, architecture for the, the project. So we contacted Arthur Dyson, who was the original architect, and he helped tremendously to continue the design and uh, to help push through the project with library staff. We hope there's a lot of practical uses for the shade sale. I know that the children's librarian have already had some of the story times out there, and uh, I know they've blown bubbles, so if you happen to drive by and see some bubbles floating in the air, it's the kids out there enjoying the space. Uh, the teens have used it, and I know that with the mus some of the musical programs coming up, Jazz Fresno, uh, they'll be able to, to enjoy the Fresno evenings out on the patio. To fund this project, uh, was some of the activities that our group puts on and primarily right now we have the honor book sale area which is here in the branch and that's all done by donations for, from uh, folks like you and uh, books are available for children, adults, teens, anybody, uh, moderately priced books and we hope you'll come in and visit us. This particular learning center is the 10th one to be open, and we opened in late November of 2017. Okay. We decided to use the funds uh, from our treasury for the early learning center after we noticed there were a lot of children playing on the floor in the children's reading area, playing with blocks and puzzles and things like that that we had. And some of our children's librarians in the cluster visit other areas that do have these and they said they were very successful and so we decided to do that also and we have a program called KC Kids 
that is here on Monday mornings with mothers and young children. So we just thought it'd be a continuation of that. So there'd be things here all week for them to use. Normally, uh, it's put to good use. And the thing that we really like to see is that parents, a lot of times mothers, but some dads that are here interacting with the children, and that's what this is all about. So it's not a babysitting area. It's for parents to react with their children. Well, about seven years ago, uh, Dan Dunkley, our current president, had this idea that we have all the branches pull together to do a book sale and really raise awareness of Friends of the Library as well as um, meet and enjoy working together across the county and really make it a celebration, but also raise some money that can be used to uh, help the library. You know, we enjoy working together, so we all have a good time, and even the folks we recruit while they're walking up and down the mall seem to enjoy it, because they come back day after day to help us out. It's an opportunity for us to work together um, with books, which we all love, and uh, share those with the public. And we sell them for a dollar or two and make money that then gets plugged back into library programs and services. So it's a win-win on both ends. We're getting books into the hands of the public. Um, we're taking books out of their bookshelves that haven't been read in a long time and uh, getting money, um, albeit at a pretty big discount, but getting money that supports the library. For the last couple of years, we've gotten between 225 and 300,000 books, individual books, that have been donated and then sold through the sale. Well, our media sponsor, our prime media sponsor for the last seven years has been Nexstar. First it was Channel uh, 47, now we're working with Channel 24, and uh, they do above and beyond the call of duty to promote the sale, to promote the book donation drive, and make all that work. Um, we also partner with other organizations, whether it's uh, Valley Public Radio, or um, there are other radio stations that have worked with us. You know, whatever we can do to get the word out that this is going on. You know, I've had a passion for books since I was a little kid and I love to read, and I really believe that the ability to read will allow you to teach yourself anything. So I think it's the great divide between those who will succeed in life, whatever success means to them, and those who will really struggle throughout their lives. So if we can help youngsters learn to read and learn to enjoy it, um, as well as help the community with you know, health needs or uh, how to fix their automobile or uh, cooking uh, endeavors, all those kinds of things as well as reading for enjoyment, that's what matters to me and that's why I spend the number of hours that I do uh, trying to help out. Now we're gonna flow, inhale this time, come up we can raise our arms straight up or leave them on the chair, whatever you like, beautiful job. Exhale, hands come back to the heart or chair, bend the knees, sinking down in the pose. Let's do that again, inhale, reaching up, strengthening the body and lengthening the torso. Exhale, hands come back to the heart as we bend the knees. Let's do two more times on your own, keeping your gaze forward, keeping the crown of the head lifted the whole time. We chose yoga for this community because uh, it was not something that was offered except for in the studios or uh, in gyms at a cost. And we thought it would be a nice offering for the community. The response to the yoga program has been wonderful. When we started out, we weren't sure uh, what would happen. And the first class was 10 to 13 people, something like that. Um, and at that time, we had both chair and the mat class going on together, where we were um, kind of, the instructor was jumping back and forth, altering poses for both. Um, but it became so popular <coughs> that we split the chair pro 
part off into its own separate class. And um, we've been having weekly classes for over a year now, and it's usually averaging 20 people or more pretty consistently. There's a real community from um, the people who come, who um, when somebody's missing, they kind of check in, and, and um, it's become a really interesting thing in the community. We've also expanded to a Wednesday evening for people who work and can't come during the day. It's just something that keeps growing in popularity. <clears throat> the yoga instructor is someone that I have um, some connections with. Um, she is very interested in the underserved communities and providing opportunities to experience uh, yoga and relaxation and those kind of things for um, not all the people who go to the gyms and whatever. So it was a very good fit for her and she was excited about going ahead and trying it out. I volunteer for the library for a lot of reasons. It started off uh, to provide opportunities for the community uh, in way of programming. Things like yoga, like art hop, exposing this community to things that they wouldn't have the opportunity to do otherwise. Um, our art hop program is also very successful in movies, everything. Um, we try to bring in opportunities, uh, wild animals, shows for kids, etc to benefit this community because as a member of the community um, and an, an early childhood educator, it's important to me to provide those opportunities. We wanted to become more interactive in the community outside of the library walls to uh, promote the fact that there is a Clovis Friends of the Library and the Clovis Library itself, as well as bring attention to the new building project. This section of the trail is right next to the new building site for the new Clovis Library. So we picked this section. It was previously unadopted and we wanted to be here and talk about it while we're doing our trail cleanups and we wanted to be able to engage the community while we're doing that. We are excited about the new Clovis Library and that we have that to promote. Uh, we are excited about the building itself. It's going to be the biggest library in the Fresno County library system and we are looking at all the groundbreaking technology that will be in this library and we are very excited about that. Uh, we're uh, very excited to be part of the Friends of the Library at this time while the library is being built and we want to bring attention to all of that. We adopted this section of the trail about a year ago, so we've been keeping it clean, pruned, and raked up for about a year. We're going to plant flowers this year in the garden on the north end of this section. We maintain this section of the trail by asking volunteers to show up on a Sunday morning for about an hour and a half and we train them on litter removal, uh, tr uh, pruning, raking, whatever needs to be done that particular day and then we get it done in about an hour and a half and we do that about once a month. I think this project is important to the Fresno County Library System because it shows that the library volunteers and the Clovis Friends of the Library can get outside of the library walls for outreach. Uh, we uh, talk to people here on the trail, uh, we engage volunteers at a different type of uh, project other than sorting books. Uh, some people don't want to sort books and this is for them. So we engage at all different levels out here. Plus we give back to the community. So Brews and Vines is a tasting event that features local breweries, local wineries, local eateries. Uh, it invites the public to come in and, um, I guess it's not really invites, is it? Let me try that. Well, they have to pay to get in. They have to pay to get in. It's not an invitation, <laughs> right? So You're invited to pay to get in. <laughs> right. Yes, and so, well, the reason we, we have Bruce and Vines is to get people into the library uh, who may not normally come to the library. That's our, our target audience is just kind of the general public who may or may not have been to a library in a long time. In fact, I think, Kyle, you've never been to a library, right? <laughs> I'm in one right now. Oh, I'm mistaken. <laughs> So the reason why we chose this type of event is it's something new. The library has done lots of great functions over the years to introduce people to what the library has to offer. This was a way of uh, reaching out to a portion of the public that probably 
hasn't been to the library for a while, maybe wouldn't know, and just a, a way to reach out to new people. The people that came last year um, were a lot of, we had a lot of surprise people uh, who just, first of all, they weren't expecting uh, to be in a library and be able to just kind of walk around with a beer in their hand or a glass of wine <laughs> in their hand. And so you had a lot of people saying, and we've heard this several times, this is not this is not how I remember the library, or this is not my, you know, <laughs> this is library. not my parents' library. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I'm, a, I'm a parent. I have two kids who grew up going to the library. The library for me has given my kids, and you know, me growing up as well, but really I've seen what it's provided my kids with, with story times and reading to the dogs and things like that. Just amazing things. So this was a great opportunity for me to give a little bit back that I can. And plus, it's a fun thing to be involved with. I have a, a background in, in uh, literature, and so I've always been a, a, an advocate for literacy in general, but this was a way where I could actually find something to uh, put some energy into and see some greater, you know, greater good come from just the actions of a, of a few people sometimes. Uh, it's amazing what, what can be done if you just get together with other people and make something happen. And so for, for this kind of event, it really is uh, even more exciting to, to just really see a lot of people come back to the library. Come to Bruce and Vines 2018. You don't want to miss it. Perfect. That makes sense. It totally makes sense. Okay. Okay.